All right, guys, totally new chapter today. Starting chapter 10, we're doing we're going to apply the counting principle and permutations, basically counting stuff, counting choices. So here we go. All right, first of all, the one way to count stuff is using what's called a tree diagram. Um, to be honest, we're not going to do this very much because it's a lot of takes up a lot of room, a lot of paper, that kind of stuff. So I do need to show it to you, and you may have to do one, but I'm not going to do too many of these. Problem says, a sporting goods store offers three types of snowboards, all mountain, freestyle, and carving, and two types, two of, types boots, of boots, soft and hybrid. hybrid. How, many How many choices does the store, store offer for snowboarding snowboard equipment? equipment? So what we did, so we did first, first is we took, we took the three, three options, options of snowboards, snowboards all, all, all mountain, mountain freestyle, freestyle carving. carving, and you can and get you can any get of those in the soft or hybrid, soft or hybrid, soft or hybrid. And basically, and basically, it gives you this many choices. It gives you one, one two, three, three, four, five, five six, six choices. choices. So, so um, six choices six of choices different kinds of snowboards, snowboards you can get, get based on what you need. That's, that's called a tree, tree diagram, diagram because it because basically looks like a tree, like a tree with branches. branches. So, so the branches, branches are called branches, branches obviously, obviously, and the tree diagram. Not the best way to count stuff, but it is a way to count stuff. All right, this is the best way. It's called the fundamental counting principle. If you have two events, if one event can occur in m ways, another event can occur in n ways, then the number of ways both can occur is m times n. You just multiply your choices. If I'd have done that last time, there were three kinds of snowboards and two kinds of finishes. Three times two is six, could have been done. If there's three or more, it can be extended and just same deal. If they're all different, now they have to be different events and outcomes, but let's say you have m, n, and p, Number of ways that all three can occur, m times n times p. You just have to multiply outcomes. Let me show you one here. This one says you're framing a picture. The frames are available in 12 different sizes. Each style, sorry, different styles. Each style is available in 55 different colors. You also want a blue matte board, which is also available in 11 different shades of blue. How many different ways can you frame the picture? How many different ways are there? Imagine doing a tree diagram when you have 55 different colors. That'd be incredible. So what we do instead is called the fundamental counting principle. It just says you can just multiply your outcome. So you have 12 styles, 55 colors, and 11 shades of blue for the matte board. So all you have to do is multiply those. I'm punching it in my calculator right now, 12 times 55 times 11, 7,260 different ways you could frame that picture. Craziness, who would have thought? But mainly because there's 55 different colors. All right, the standard uh, configuration for a Texas license plate is one letter, followed by two digits, followed by three letters. So it's a letter, it goes like this, a letter, digit, digit, letter, letter, letter. That's how a Texas license plate looks. There are 26 letters in the alphabet. There are 10 digits because you have to count zero. So zero through nine is 10 digits, just like on your cell phone. Okay, part A. How many different license plates are possible if letters and digits can be repeated? So what I do a lot of times is I'm gonna draw blanks for each, each spot. So I have a letter, a digit, a digit, a letter, a letter, a letter. Now, for my first blank, I have 26 choices of how many letters I could choose from. My first digit, I have nine choices of how many, sorry, that's not right. I have 10 digits to choose from because there are 10 digits. I don't know what I was thinking, zero through nine. Because it says I can repeat, repeating is allowed, I also have 10 choices for the next digit because I could use like seven twice in a row. And because I can repeat, I have 26 more choices for that letter, 26 for that letter, 26 for that letter. That's a lot of license plate, but you know what? Texas needs a lot of license plate. So I'm punching that in right now. I'm really punching in 26 to the fourth power um, times 100, because that's what 10 times 10 is. Oh my goodness, this is how many license plates are possible. Four, five, six, nine, seven, six, zero, zero. Put your commas in there. 45 million license plates, if you can repeat digits. That's a lot, that's enough for Texas probably. Part B, how many different license plates are possible if you cannot repeat? So watch what I'm gonna do now. Still going, still the same. Uh, configuration letter digit digit letter 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 but a couple things change because I cannot repeat this time so whatever I I still have 26 letters to choose from there still have 10 digits to choose from there but because I've already used one digit I only have nine to choose from for there and because I've used one letter already I only have 25 choices and then 
I've used two letters, so I have 24 choices. Now I've used three letters, so I only have 23 choices. So I'm going to multiply that out real quick on the calculator and get still going to be a large number, but much smaller because I can't repeat. So 322-92000. So that one is 32 million. So I get 13 more million license plates because you can repeat. And again, you're going to see me draw blanks like that a lot and just fill them in with numbers that are missing. That's also a fundamental counting principle. All right, one method of counting is called permutations. Permutations when you count how many orders or arrangements of something there is. Um, for example, let's say you have the letters A, B, and C. You want to know how many different arrangements there are. And that would be called a permutation. Like you could have C, B, A, A, C, B, B, C, A, B, A, C, and I'm missing one more, C, A, B. There's six of them. Okay, so permutations just means how many different orders are there or how many different arrangements of n objects there are. And one of the best ways to do that is with the, what's called a factorial. Factorial is an exclamation point in math. And when you see something like this, three factorial, doesn't mean you go three. It means you do three times two times one all the way down to one, and that would be six. All right, so that's all that means when you see that. So the way you find how many permutations of n objects, that's all of the objects, you just do n factorial. You just take that number and multiply that number times the next one, times the next one, all the way down to one until you get your answer. And I'll show you one here on the next slide. All right, let's try one. It says 10 teams are competing uh, in the opening finals round of the Olympic four-person bobsledding competition, part A. And how many different ways can the bobsledding teams finish the competition? Okay, there are 10 teams. So if it's all the teams, we're going to say, okay, it'd be 10 factorial, which would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If you punch it in your calculator, that's a bunch of multiplication right there. Um, you would get 362,000, sorry, 3,628,000. 800. That's a lot of different ways. Those are all the different orders those 10 teams could, uh, could finish. Now, part B is a little bit different. Watch this. In how many different ways can three of the bobsledding teams finish first, second, and third to win the gold, silver, and bronze, which in the Olympics, that's really all they care about anyways, first, second, third. So here's what that would be. That'd be a permutation because you're counting how many different ways or orders there are. There are 10 teams competing. We want uh, the top three. How many ways can the top three of them finish? So that's all the different ways three out of the ten can finish. So when you're doing a permutation, the permutations, um, when they have a three, works out a little bit differently because you're not trying to figure them all out. It's just a tad bit different. Watch this. I haven't really shown you this. This was on the last slide, but when you have some of them, the way we're going to treat that is 10C 10P3 is going to look like this. 10 factorial on the top. And on the bottom, we're actually going to do 10 minus 3. That's a minus sign. Factorial, that's a minus. So really I have this. I have 10 factorial over 7 factorial. And that's going to give me all the different ways. All right now, it looks worse than it is because on the top is really 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down to 1. So that's 7 right there. It's really 7 factorial. And on the bottom, we also have seven factorial so what happens is those just cancel which leaves me 10 times 9 times 8 which is 720 ways so you have 720 ways that that could um, possibly happen and that's all you have to do there another way if you don't like the the permutation is you could draw blanks like this like we did earlier and say well, okay there are 10 teams that have a choice of finishing first and then once the first place team, there are nine teams left that can finish second. And there are eight teams left that have a chance of finishing third. And if you multiply those three numbers, obviously you get the same thing. So either one of those ways work. I do want you to know this, how permutation works though. Okay, and here's what I was just showing you. If you're, if you're going to take a few objects, here's how permutations work if you're not taking all of the objects. You do the total number of objects on the top. On the bottom, you take the amount that you are... Uh, talking about like the last problem we just did had the top three teams so I did n minus three on the bottom and do that factorial also okay so that's that's all I was trying to show you in the last slide okay one more example of that it says you're burning a demo CD for your band this book is written back in the day your band has 12 songs stored in a computer um, however you want to put only four songs on the demo CD how many orders can you burn for the 12 songs so 12 songs total you're gonna burn four 
All right, so if you start to work that out, it looks like this, 12 factorial. On the bottom, you do 12 minus four factorial, which is really eight factorial. All right, so on the top, here's what's gonna happen every time. Okay, it goes 12 times 11 times 10 times nine. When you get to the eight, that goes all the way down to one, but it's also the same thing you have in your denominators. I'm gonna leave it like that and like that so I can just cancel those out. So my final answer is just gonna be whatever 12 times 11 times 10 times nine is, and everybody knows that's 11,880. When you punch in your calculator anyway, everybody knows that. Okay, so part of your homework, they're just gonna have you practice this. They're gonna give you problems just like this one. I don't know why I just did that. Just like this one, and just have you work that out. So five P3 would mean five factorial over. Remember the bottom is five minus three or two factorial. So that would work out like five times four times three. When you get to the two, I'm gonna leave it factorial because that's what I have on the in my denominator. Those cancel. That gives me 60. All right, this one, four factorial over four minus one factorial, which would be three factorial. So we get four times three factorial over three factorial. Those would cancel. Just get four. All right, one last thing here, permutations with repetition. If you have stuff that repeats, obviously the order wouldn't change. For example, if you have, I don't know, let's say the word C, S-E-E, -E, and you're gonna rearrange the letters, well, because the E's are the same, that's gonna make a big difference in how many different ways you can arrange them. Because if all I do is switch the E's, uh, it still looks exactly the same. So that one counts a different order. Only the orders you could do there would be E S E E E S, and that's really all there is because the letters repeat. Whereas the very first slide today I showed you A B C, and there were six permutations of that. If the letters repeat, obviously that hampers us. So here's how we're going to do it. There's the formula. Um, basically, it means you take the total on the top, like we always do. Have the total number of letters on the on the top, on the bottom. You take each thing that repeats, how many times it repeats, and go that way. Okay, what better word to show you with than the word Tennessee, all right? Uh, how many different permutations of the letters in Tennessee or different orders? Well, first of all, Tennessee has nine letters, so I'm going nine factorial in my numerator. On the bottom, what I'm noticing, it has two N's, four E's, and two S's. So everything that repeats, I gotta put that in my denominator, all right? So if I start to work that out, I'm going nine, eight, seven, six, five. I'm going to four factorial in this one. Um, two factorials is two times one, the other two factorials is two times one, and then I still have that four factorials. What happens is those cancel. All right, so my numerator then, if I just punch that in, um, nine times eight times seven times six times five, I get 15,120. My denominator is four, so if I divide that by four, this is how many different ways you could rearrange the letters in the word Tennessee, which is crazy. Maybe our homework assignment should be showing me all 3,780 ways you could write the word letters in the word Tennessee. That would be crazy. Okay, hope that helps. Uh, this is gonna be your one video for the week. You need to uh, keep referring back to it as you see different problems every day. Everything you need is in this video, so you should be good to go. Uh, you will have three Google Docs to work on. I Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so good luck. It's winding down, hang in there.